We have a huge NHL trade to discuss. The Ottawa Senators and the Detroit Red Wings have finally hooked up on an Alex DeBrinket trade. We'll discuss all the details, what it means for both clubs, coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, the Alex DeBrinket saga in Ottawa is finally coming to an end. The Senators and the Red Wings have finally concluded their negotiations and we finally have a trade in place. And as I mentioned all along, a lot of the reports indicated that the agent for DeBrinket, Jeff Jackson, and just the negotiations they were going through with the other teams on a new contract was indeed holding things up. Uh, I really think at the end, that indeed appears to be the truth based on the new contract that the break is going to be getting from the Detroit Red Wings because it is not anywhere near what he wanted. So it's fair to say at this point, we can say the break it as much as all the stories were all the different reasons. He just didn't want to be in Ottawa. It's just that simple. He did not want to play for the Ottawa Senators and wanted to work his way back to his home state of Michigan. To me, that's the end story. Uh, and that's really what happened. Now, at the end of the day, here is the deal. Uh, the Detroit Red Wings are sending two players and two draft picks to Ottawa for the services of RFA Alex Debrinket. The Senators are getting uh, forward Dominic Kubelik, uh, who is one year left on his contract at $2.5 million. Kubelik could be a phenomenal middle six player for Ottawa. We'll see how he does. Uh, he came to the league, I think it was three or four years ago, with Chicago put up a 30-goal season. Now, since then, I think he's hit 20 goals once. I think he was uh, between 15 and 20 last year. Um, so he's certainly a goal scorer, uh, which is good. And he's not making a ton of money, and he's not signed for a ton period of time. So this can be an opportunity, again, for like a tryout. We'll see how things work out and see um, you know, if there's a, a longer-term fit. They also get young 21-year-old prospect defenseman Donovan Sabrino, who... Uh, to be honest, I know I think he's had a little bit of a slower start to his pro career, but he's only 21. He's only, I think he's played parts of two seasons in the pro, a split time between the East Coast League and AHL. But when he was in junior, like he had a really good junior career, represented Canada at the World Junior Championships, like on that level. He was a really good defense, but a really high uh, level prospect. So uh, certainly he's still young. Uh, I don't think he's going to be able to play in the NHL right away. And to be honest, Ottawa does not need him to. Uh, they have their six or seven NHL quality defense, but already there's already a little bit of a log jam there. Um, and I think he'll be a great help, hopefully for Belleville, and can work his way up to maybe be you know a future uh, option for them in a year or two down the road. Um, but he said he's 21. He's still, still um, in my opinion, a, a pretty good-looking prospect. But time will tell if he turns out to be a solid long-term NHL player. Based on his junior career, though, odds are good. But we'll see. Lots of work to do on his part. They also get two draft picks coming up in the 2024 NHL draft. They get a conditional first and a fourth. So a fourth-round pick, that's easy. There's no conditions there. The first-round pick's a little bit more complicated because the Red Wings have two. They have their own, and they have the Boston Bruins pick that they got in the Tyler Bertuzzi trade. So how this is going to work is uh, the Red Wings will have the option of which one they're going to send Ottawa Obviously, they'll send the lower one of the two. And that's obviously pretty simple. But if the Boston Bruins have a bad season and end up in the draft lottery, that draft pick has conditions on it. That if it's a top 10 pick, that they have the option of keeping the pick and deferring to the following year. So if the Bruins, uh, you know, have a bad season, end up in the lottery, and it ends up uh, in the lottery, they get top 10. Then Detroit doesn't get that pick. The, the, the Bruins, well, they, they could let them have it, but you know they're probably not going to. They would defer to 2025. So if that happens, the condition is Detroit can either say, okay, we're keeping our first and we're going to give you Boston's 2025 first, or you can have our first. Like they all have the option of which one they're going to give Ottawa. So Ottawa will either get the Red Wings first rounder next year or the Bruins in 2025. But if that doesn't happen, which I don't think it will, the Bruins, I mean, the Bruins might not be as good as last year, but I'd be shocked if they ended up with a top 10 pick, to be honest. So if that doesn't happen, which is unlikely, then you're going to have a case of whoever has the lower pick between the Bruins and the Red Wings will go to Ottawa. So they'll get a first and a fourth. So next year right now, Ottawa's looking at having two firsts, which is good. Uh, they have that as extra, um, you know, trade assets, you could say. Now, so that gives Ottawa a player who can play in their top nine uh, immediately in Kuba League. It gives them a nice prospect defenseman for the future. It gives them a couple of draft picks. To me, this is a good return. They paid at first, second, and third for Dabrinkit a year ago. And, you know, he had a good season. He didn't have a great season. 
Uh, over time, they could have figured out maybe getting him uh, back up to uh, the, the pace that he was before. But at the same time, like, you know, he didn't have the proper center all year either because Norris was out injured. That didn't help matters, but it is what it is. For whatever reason, Alex Dabrinkit just did not want to be an Ottawa center. We heard that he wanted to see how ownership played out. He, we heard that if he wanted to see, uh, you know, uh, how other things played out. He wanted to see this and that. Now, the, the rumor, the extension, which I, I'm waiting to be officially announced and probably will be before this hits YouTube, so I'll have it confirmed in the comment section. But it's believed that Dabrinkit is signing a four-year deal at $7.87 million. That's just a little bit above what the arbitration uh, case was uh, that the Senators were trying to get in arbitration. Uh, his qualified offer was nine. He was looking at uh, much more money in Ottawa. That just goes, that's proof right there. He does not want to be a senator because he could have had eight times eight in Ottawa. Didn't want. So uh, clearly, Iserwin gets him on a bridge deal. Like, he doesn't even get this. Set. Not only does he get less money, but he gets less term. Like, they fumbled that negotiation big time. I mean, like I said, he gave up a lot of money to go back to Detroit and to, to leave Ottawa. So like I said, that's clear as day what his motivation was. Um, you know, we'll see if it works out for him. Uh, they don't have a lot of players that much sure he's really going to fit with him. I mean, he could play with Larkin, which would be good. I mean, Dylan Larkin's a, a really good player. So we'll see if he can fit with them on their top line and get top power play minutes. Maybe he can get back to what he used to be. We'll have to wait and see. Um, but the breaker was more of a playmaker last year. His assist totals went up. Goal totals went down overall. Not a bad season, but based on a lot of the analytics people, this is what they projected him to be after the season he had in Ottawa last year. They expected his contract to be right around this value. So uh, it's pretty uh, market value for sure. But like I said, well, the reason to struggle so long is it looks like his agent and him, they were just looking for way too much. They were just looking for an unrealistic number uh, when it comes to dollars and terms. So they finally agreed on that, which is why we have a trade. The extension should be announced shortly. And we'll go for now. This also opens up some room for the Ottawa Senators without paying him $9 million. They are expected, and until it becomes official, we can't say it is. I mean, I started recording this as soon as the details came out, so maybe something else has been announced. But it is expected that the Ottawa Senators are a leading contender. Now, I'm not going to say it gets a given because it's not, but they are a leading contender to sign Vladimir Tarasenko. So they get Tarasenko and Kubelik in their lineup now. They get a prospect for later and a couple of picks. I think Ottawa is a better team, to be honest. I think that they did well under the circumstances and recoup a fair bit of what they gave up. And this is all going to work out for them in the long run. And we'll see. It's, it kind of sucks paying, uh, you know, sending him to a division rival, but you got to go wherever the best offer is and where he's willing to sign too, which unfortunately for him was home. So it made it complicated that way. But let me know your thoughts on the debrigade deal finally coming to a close here. And we'll talk about it more in the comments. If you're new to the channel, subscribe and stick around. We'll keep you up to date with all the news, rumors, analysis of all 32 NHL teams. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.